So what is it like? And, and, but my point is, is that what's fabulous for me, and this is part of the things I try to do. There's a lot going on in that greeting and there's a lot being implied, but like one of the things that, that is so powerful um, as, as a, a practice, see why I like, practicing balance as a sensation is that you can it's got a really simple touchstone right like i can actually practice balance your head over your neck you know like there are ways to make all these different faces come into a practice that i understand like here's a question for you but it's kind of rhetorical just to kind of open up the 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 um landscape here are you balanced when you're lying in bed i would say no not necessarily so again can you be in full balance without movement interesting question the answer is yes and no Right. What's the relationship when you're in the deepest Shavasana that you've ever been in? Right. Are you balanced? Is what's the relationship between the sensation of relief and the sensation of balance? How come human brains have typically defined balance in terms of physical accomplishment? Right? Like, what's, why would that be? Right? Is balance controllable? What kinds of balance are controllable? What kinds of balance aren't? All these things. So when I say there's a lot to learn from the sensation of balance, I've only just begun. And every time I seriously practice it, I change. It changes me. The investigation changes me. When you're perfectly balanced in, I don't know, whatever balance you pose, physical pose you're doing, and your jaw is, is clenched, are you in balance? Right? Well, in some ways, yeah. In some ways, no. Um. Is balance possible in the midst of a spasm? Is it possible when just psychologically? So one of the questions I ask is that we teach balance as a sensation, but we don't ask people to imagine or make balance psychological or visualize balance even though they're out of balance. Because that's what happens. Well, you can think about balance while while you're out of physical balance. Like that's not what we're talking about. So sit up straight and tall. So one of the things there, one of the ways that we teach balance, and we're going to try to practice this now, is 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 as an equal distribution of presence. So like when you're having a, a cramp or a spasm, right, and it hurts in a way that muscle is cramping because it's out of balance with the rest of your body, right? Some sort of input came into that muscle that it doesn't quite know what to do with, so it clenches and grips for survival. It holds on super tight because it's overwhelmed, right? The other thing that, one of the other things I imply in the greeting is that balance is has something to do with, with a balance between emptiness and fullness. Right. So sit up straight and tall again. So, so this, this, and there's a whole bunch of things. And I can only like, again, this is a what, and also what is the measure of being on balance? Is it that you can do really hard balancing poses? Maybe that's one measure. Right. So I'm starting to now by even by feeling my feet, my sitting bones, and lift my chest. 
and balance my head over my neck. I'm trying to more equally distribute my mind's awareness of my whole body, right? Because what you're going to find is that it's mostly your mind that's out of balance. And I don't mean psychologically, right? I don't mean like I need a better work-life balance, which you probably do, right? I know I do, right? All these things. So, and there's certain places where I get a lot of mileage. As you can tell for the last year or so, balancing my head over my neck, it makes me, cat the sensation then cascades through my whole body. But maybe that one doesn't work for you as well. I find if I if I if I just soften the inside of my mouth, that tends to not, it's a relief. But then there's a movement part. I want the relief of softening the inside of my mouth to intersect and get scooped up by a, an expansion of presence. Right? So as you sit and feel your feet, your sitting bones, and learn if I if I crank my chest to lift it, I'm out of balance. Remember, we've been talking about the first step into movement, right? And that being a really important step, right? So I want to learn to lift my chest without disturbing the stillness. One of my favorite lines in the greeting is, balance is a question of realization, not creation. Sop in the inside of my mouth, that gets a certain part of my experience. The empty part, but it's coming into balance with some version of effort and my body. But it turns out that the emptiness was already in my body. I can add effort here, but can I add effort without disturbing? Down with my sitting bones. Up with my chest. Lengthening my neck. Front, back, in space in the room. Can the beginning of my inhalation not disturb the pond? How about the the transition to exhalation, do I grip there? Are there places in my body, like right now, the right side of my rib diaphragm is in spasm a little bit. It's where I always have pain here. So I can't change that. Not right now. So where do I go? Do I ignore it? Where's your asymmetries? Do I just accept them? What role does my mind have? Very little. Let go of your day. Prepare your mind to do yoga.
it and then release. So where do you fall to when you release? Now lift your sternum, drop your chin. So for some of you, tuning into breath is a form of balance, but is your breath congruent with the empty side of the sensation of balance? Are you capable of simultaneity? If your mind tries to have the emptiness, you're already out of balance. Good, and then raise your head up with closed eyes. Open your eyes. So why do you think Patanjali is constantly trying to get you to stop the oscillations or cease the oscillations of mind? What's being revealed? Right? So again, now try to come into a different kind of balance. And as a practical truth, as we have to manage our lives and our disabilities like we do, most of us aren't aware of our back body is enough, right? So balance front to back. So really, that's why I always say to me in a class, let in what's behind you. But how do you like become aware of that? Sometimes it helps to think you have eyes on the back of your head, right? Eyes on the back of your chest. Like you, you are in space in all directions. I've heard BK Sangar talk about having eyes, a set of inward and outward eyes on every cell of the body. Because on some level, balance is profoundly a balance between what's inside and what's outside. If you can bring your hands into prayer, if you can't just bring your, bring your hands down on your, on your thighs, right? So I go through certain practices on balance, trying to get, so for a long time, this is an old instruction. I would try to imagine my hands or, you know, my forearms on my legs or whatever as an outer manifestation of a spot directly behind my sternum. Because I know if I, because I trust the yogis, if I can get this part of my spine in better balance with the space around me, everything's going to get easier, right? That's from practice. That's not because I was told that. So how do I like make a connection between the where my the outer manifestation of whatever part of your body you are and an inner place in the center of your chest? So if it can be between your hands and the inside of your sternum, but then like pay attention to what it takes to actually, there's a place where I can just imagine the two points. Da, 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 and pretend they're just two points and I imagine a connection. Can you make a connection? Right? I'm just not saying mentally locate the two spaces. Make them the same. Make them the same space. And once I start doing that, my whole body has to come into the pose. So if I'm taking seriously the instruction, instead of letting my mind thinks it knows what it's doing, if I take seriously and investigate, letting my hands become an outer manifestation of an, of an inward place in the center of my chest at the seat of consciousness, how do I become congruent with that? Okay, so as soon as I actually slightly and gently connect and become aware of the heel of my hands, the skin on my palms, 
and an opening like a smile of the skin between my fingers, uh, on my fingers. As soon as I do that, in conjunction with the center of my chest, I start to feel my feet more. The hell? And when that happens, I want the what's behind me to come into my pose. Then I equalize the pressure. I can tell I'm not pressing as much on the outside edge of my thing of my hands. And as soon as I connect the two, something else happens. But I just had my arms try to overdo it, my biceps try to overdo it. And my right bicep is firing more than my left. Right? How do I come into balance with my effort? How does my mind become aware of all this and keep the inside of my mouth soft and my jaw soft? Because as soon as my mind starts judging too much, I clench. Now I'm back. I can feel the hum. Now my breath more. Can I integrate my breath into whatever I'm receiving now? Can I feel the center of my hands and the space between alongside my ears to my shoulders? Can I feel that with the space about six inches behind my back? Can I feel my sitting bones and my inner heels? Whoop, I'm doing too much again. Shit. What are you doing? Are you waning? Are you alert? Control of the muscles has very little to do with this level of sensation integration. And my breathing equally between each nostril. Is one side, is one lug getting more air than the other? Probably. Can I fix it? No. Good. And then release. How many people waned in that practice? Because that was way too many words. And they were my words rather than your words. Right? I was traveling through my body, not yours. Do it again. Do your own instructions right now. Do it like it matters. I'm not even going to do this. I'm going to watch you all. I want to see you doing it. Take seriously the sensation of balance. This sensation is at the core. It's a, we say it's one of the four universal sensations, core sensations. It's in every single pose, in every single movement. Practice it right now like it matters. And with the intensity of my voice, boys, let that aside and be happy as you practice it. Because if you make it too seriously, you're out of balance again. The sensation is joyful and serious. It. I don't know about you, but when I do it for too long, 
I, the, the reality of physical facts discourages me. So don't do it for too long. Practice balance in spurts. So let's move around a bit. Now it's time to move finally. My God, are we finally out of the dog pen, right? Oh, for God's sakes, that was way too empty, way too focused. So why do we move each time and get the spine moving around, right? Anyone ever heard me say there's space in your base? There's relief. Every yoga pose begins and ends in relief. Oh, for God's sakes. Let's stretch out the low back. Why do I, when I'm doing stuff like that in every class, did you get I was setting the conditions for balance? That you need like the sense of space. Right, so now I'm doing it. And if you want to do dog pose, do dog pose, right? I'm leaning forward under the table, right? Because I want space in my low back. And then I'm going like, wait, if all the space actually touches, if I'm in balance, as I extend my low back, can I feel my femur bones and my inner thighs, right? Down to my feet? Yes, I can. Because balance is a doorway. Space is a doorway to your whole body. Right, you can go be in balance in your hands and balance your entire pr presence. Right, and then we, so that that space in the back. Right, I've been we've been talking so much and it's been real focused. So get up and over the back of your chair. Right, get this open, and I forget to lengthen the space lately between the center of my chest and the bottom of my chin. Damn, I need that skin too. And as soon as I feel this length, I'm going to broaden between my shoulder blades because I want to find my legs, right? So I'm, so I'm using balance to be the doorway, not effort, right? I'm going to put my lift up a little bit again and put my back in traction, right? Like get that like hanging gravity use for myself. Yeah, I want that space. And then I'm going to use that space to know that that space is actually in the core of my paralyzed legs, right? And then, like lift again. And I'm going to be finding these connections, right? Having like know that it's it's waiting for me to see that my empty space is already unified. It's already connected. And it's true in every pose. What the hell? Take your arms wide. So I lean back into my chair because I, if I do it without in my chair, I have to fight. It's a different kind of balance. This is more like, so I'm not leaning into my chair at all. My arms are wide. I'm paralyzed from my chest down. So this is more of a teeter-totter balance. And notice my shoulders go up towards my ears, right? Because I'm I'm gripping here. So I'm going to find a way to not have to do that. I'm going to take one hand because I, I don't know what's true about your body. Maybe when you take both your arms wide, you can be perfectly balanced. Ah, I doubt it, right? But whatever. You, you, you can believe whatever you want, right? So I'm going to take one hand between my, grab my wheelchair, my seat here, and go this way and work on balance here but i don't just mean the balance of holding my arm up i mean am i aware of the space under my arm equally to the space over my arm am i balanced between what's in front of me and what's behind me right am i actually balancing if i just hold my arm up physically no but now if i don't do the other side like that and i just go back to both arms it's weird because now something's opened over here. So I'm going to do it the other way. Now, with the way my scoliosis is, I don't grab between my, my chair seat. I grab over here. I don't know what's true for your body. So explore balance. So, like, I have no idea where this is coming from, Mary Peterson, but are you equal in each leg right now? I don't think so. I can somehow see it in your, in your, in your sternum, right? 
Okay, so now I'm practicing above, below, front, back, this side of my head, all these things. And now I'm marking it with my breath, right? And then back. Now I'm going to integrate the sensation of what I did on this side with the sensation of this side. And I'm going to try to let my mind be porous enough to trust that I can bring the past from into the present, into the, you know, into what I'm about to do. And I'm going to try to take all of this and go like this and feel above, below, front, back, where my sitting bones are, where my bones are, where my feet are, balance my head over my neck. Damn it, my mind gets too serious all the time. Maybe my joy comes more from my skin touching the space outside of me. And I'm going to breathe. Good. And then release. I don't know about you, but before I did all this one side to the whole thing, this would not have been nearly as much imbalance if I'd gone straight to here. With all that extra practice, now I'm lifting my spine again, right? Because I fell into compression. I could feel it. As soon as I took my arms wide, my actually low back compressed. So I'm making sure I keep that open again. And keep that open. I know that's revealing my legs. Equal distribution of presence is balance. As soon as I go into physical facts here, my scoliosis, I'm talking about my body now, but if you've got your own story. As soon as I go back, I fall into scoliosis and I'm out of balance on one level. So I'm going to lift up again. I'm going to keep aware of sensations that are lighter in my back, even though as soon as I go into this world, I'm going to resist it a little bit. I'm going to try to keep more awareness in my right sitting bone, right? And I'm going to try to keep the sensation. See, I'm already improving. I can feel it right now. Then I'm going to take my arms wide. Now I can see both sitting bones, even though there's way more weight on one, right? I'm going to lift my chest. Oh, God, my muscles are having a strain now, so I got to make sure I feel the space in the room. Inhale the space into my body from the room and exhale it through my body. Good. And then release. So it just seems more dramatic to have your arms wide. So do it here. Put your hands on your chest. Wait, wait. This is the integrated part of consciousness. Yeah, actually. And I'm going to try to connect this. I'm touching my fingers right here or whatever I can. And I'm gonna to try to make sure that I'm aware here as I raise my elbows. Ooh, that's actually a hard practice. I gotta move around, <laughs> that was hard, right? Because I could tell I was just gonna throw it away, right? I'm gonna to try to do that. Ooh, wait, that's really hard for me. So I'm gonna, wait, so now I'm gonna make sure, because when I just do it this way, they auto, if I just go from here, from the outer tips of my elbows, I'm not in balance, so. I've got to make length from my side waist to my start on my chest. Lift my sternum and lift my elbows as an expression of a burst from the center of my chest. All this if I want to be on balance. Ooh, I still do too much on the right side because I can feel the fatigue come into my right shoulder more than my left. Right? So in order to fix that, I'm not going to pull back here. I'm going to hit down through my sitting bones and my feet. So my shoulder's not holding up the universe. What's your story? I don't know. Right? Okay. So go back to your hands for a second. So when I asked you to feel the underside of your arms, did you guys just think you knew how to do that? Because I don't. I'm still working on it. Right? And if I'm still working at it, you probably have more to work on. Right? So I've been trying to do weird stuff like here, my bring my hands together if you can, but it doesn't have to be your hands. It could be the space between your elbow and your, and your side body, right? In other words, the negative space in relationship to what you're feeling on my hands, right? I'm, I'm putting my fingers together now. I'm feeling where the skin touches, 
but do you know how to access the space between your fingers? What do I do that? So if I press too hard my palms together, that's not right. But I need the contact in order to open to other sensation in here. Ooh, so all of a sudden I'm opening. I I can by the way, this is the kind this kind of shit I love, right? I got this going on between the fingers, and I'm going like this, and all of a sudden. I can feel the finger come through the empty space in parts of my body. What? What the hell? That's freaking crazy. I'll bet you you can too. Right? Start watching. I know I can't feel it if I drop my chest. Then it just becomes disconnected. Right? If I lift my chest and I stay open with everything I am, all of a sudden, these movements in the empty space start reflecting in my body. Hands back together. How do I stretch? I remember Joe tried to get me to feel this by being able to stretch the inside and outside, the, each side of the fingers. So she did it from the skin. But it wasn't about being able to stretch the muscles. It was about being able to receive the spaces between the fingers. So try to do this type of awareness and clench your jaw and tell me how far you get. Right? No, the empty spaces have to remain open for balance to be a transcendent sensation. What? And then relief. What the heck? Inhale up. But like, I want you to go down and up. And have the down, so I could just throw it up. If I just go up, I'm out of balance, right? If I go down and up, I'm kind of happier, just so you know. And I'm doing the other arm. When I come down, and when my arm comes down, I feel it like travel through all of me, right? Because I'm practicing a more awake receiving mind. And then down. What? What? I can. So, how do I open to the movement of my hand? down through my spine, practice this shit, up, down through me, right, up, through me, so when you take, you're going to take your arm up, so one of the ways that this helped me is I had someone say, I think it was Amy, say, move as if you're swimming through space, so as soon as I started to do that, I started to realize, wait, oh, wait, I'm going to make it be my whole body now. I'm not just going to move my arm. That's out of balance. I'm going to move my whole body. I'm going to be in balance, swimming through the empty, make the empty space dimensional and swim and go back. All you watch an advanced yogi that isn't too much in love with their own control, they're swimming in poses. They're going through the medium of empty space, <clears throat> right? And it turns out, if I can get this, this, these intercostal muscles open, I'll swim better. So now I'm getting more physical here for a second. I'm feeling the stretch, trying to open my rib cage. But as I open my rib cage, can I feel my legs, my femur bones better? Yeah. Do it. Practice balance. It's already connects you to your whole body. Good. And then release. I can't believe how the rib cage reflects all over my whole body. And my hands reflect my rib cage. Wait, you mean my fingers are like ribs? Yeah, actually it is. Just so you know, they're like little ribs, right? So now... I'm gonna inhale, I'm gonna go down, up, in balance with the whole room. I'm gonna go down, up. I'm gonna come down through all of me as I turn. Learn to talk with your whole body. It's a really good practice, right? So this type of stuff made me be able to increase the presence of my voice. Cause I started to realize that my whole body could do stuff, right? <clears throat> and then I'm gonna to start to twist, right? And what my mind wants to hurry up and go, yeah, I'm going to crank this twist because that's the pose. 
No, I want to turn the whole world with me through my spine, right? So I want to stay connected to what's outside of me. It helps me to close my eyes there when I try to turn, twist with the whole world, right? Bring the whole world with me. Inhale, lift up, exhale, revolve. Lift under the collarbones, right? Don't just effort to narrow the world, effort to receive the world, right? If you're, and then release. If you start cranking the twist too much and make it too physical, your effort will be to control the world, not to receive it. In asana, you're trying to figure out how to move your body so you can receive more. Okay, here I go. I'm going to try to go, whew. Right away, I just, my mind wanted to throw up and go too fast. I like that. I didn't mean to say throw up. Throw my arm up, right? Throw up. I'm going to move through space, through the medium of emptiness as, a, as like water, and come across. And I'm going to feel everything come across. And I'm going to ground when I hit my arm, my leg, right? I'm going to use that balance here to open here. I'm going to stay connected. Inhale, lift up. Exhale, revolve. Your mind's going to want to win. It was never about winning, right? It was about can you inhale, lift up, exhale, revolve, spread between the collarbones, feel your sitting bones and your feet. It was always about efforting to receive, not to narrow. Good, and then release. So one of the things that, and then I'm going to go back and forth again, because holy cow, I need to not get so deep into that twist. What's the difference between doing yoga and weightlifting? <clears throat> when you're lifting weights, which are both good practices, you're narrowing your attention to force a conflict between you and the weight, right? Makes sense, right? So I'm going back and forth here again because I want to, I'm going to back then. I'm going to open. Seems like I might have like scared some students away in this class. Nod your head at this class is really hard. Is it hard? Is it too much? I actually don't give a shit, but if it's too much, I almost apologize, right? I think I do. I think I apologize, right? But I'm trying to take care of myself by knowing I got really, in my own practice, I'm trying to feel space again because space and the balance that's already existing in space is the unifier, right? And I don't have to create it. I have to realize it. It already happened. All these themes are in the, in the greeting. It already happened. All right. So... I'm going to try to feel where my body is, lift your chest, be in the center, feel my body, and now include the, the negative spaces, the empty spaces, each side of my neck connected to the center of my chest. What's behind me, what's in front of me. No, I'm gonna and I'm gonna collapse and drop my chest and go back into more like a so isn't it interesting that we start more in the womb in a fetal position? Right? So there's something really important about this position, right? <clears throat> From here we trust, maybe. Right. From here we trust. And then I'm going to open again. And I'm going to wonder, why is it so scary to be more open? It's 
So maybe when there's less, gonna go back to fetal position. Maybe when there's less, my mind feels safer because there's less. Maybe when there's more, my mind starts to see and imagine threat. By the way, that's a very good survival habit. However, I'm practicing at home right now. And then back again. Forward, forearms on, on, on your femur bone, on your legs. Quick, little, strong, upward-facing dog. Because I want to show tell my mind, no, you're actually pretty tough. You got control here. I'm gonna, now, to make sure it's on balance, I'm going to lift under. I tend to lift more than my right collarbone than my left. I got, I got to like catch my own habits. I'm going to lift under my collarbones, broaden between my shoulder blades, broaden across my sacrums, extend from the inner groin to the inner knee down to the inner heel. Know that I don't do as good a job on the left leg as I do on the right. <laughs> smile at all of it. Smile at all my habits. Right? And then go back. Right? And then come into the pose again. Now, when I'm with this much effort or more effort, more compressive, can I be open to the spaces between my ears and my shoulders? To the space in the room. And when I try to do that, it's a good time to breathe. Good. So right now we're engaged in really dynamic poses, right? And we're near the end <clears throat> where we're trying to do it with a really calm voice, right? Now I'm going to do upward facing dog, but I'm going to be twisted slightly. So I'm coming forward. And I'm finding good balance, physical balance. But really what matters is conditions of safety for my mind not to freak out, right? So I'm grabbing the front of my knee and my thigh, and I'm leaning forward, changing gravity. And I'm feeling the strength and calm of upward facing dog, and I'm turning just like. Now I'm integrating my breath, and I'm making sure my effort is spilling and integrating with the whole room while being centered in my spine, making sure I stay open to receiving my legs, balance in effort. <clears throat> Back to the center. Forward again to the other side, coming forward, knowing that I've got the strength of upward facing dog, Notice my hands position changed depending on the side because my body's different, right? So I'm coming out of the earth in upward facing dog. I'm dynamically twisting slightly, but not cranking. As I do, I'm making sure I'm spilling into the whole room from the earth into the whole room, right? But I'm receiving the whole room into my spine. I integrate my breath without deep breaths. If I take deep breaths, I'm out of balance. Good. And then come on back to center. Ooh. That one got me cooking, actually. So now I'm going to find this class goes till noon. Just so you know, no, it doesn't. So now I'm going to try to heal because that was a really big. So I'm going to bring my legs a little closer together like this. So the straight line winds of prana come through my bones. 
right? So I'm going to feel that, the core channel getting boundary, but I'm going to open to the spaces, the negative spaces around my body while having my core channel demarcated more. I'm going to lift my sternum gently and try to let my skin reach out into the world because it already does. I'm going to add some symmetry, each foot, each sitting bone, each side of the breastbone, each side of the head. So I'm setting up Shavasana. Because you want boundary and emptiness in Shavasana. And then the boundary will disappear. Good, and then release. Now position yourself to truly let your chair hold you up. Right, <clears throat> so get yourself and then make sure there's a combination of the heaviness that is required to feel the chair hold you up, but some sort of suppleness, right? So for often for me, it's my thumb tips together, right? To make sure that I'm receiving on as many cylinders as I can, right? Because you want the empty spaces to receive from the solidity of your body. Because the nourishment is, in my opinion, is for the empty spaces. So I gotta let my body and my bones be here. Soften the skin on my forehead and face. Relax my temples, lips together, teeth slightly apart. Soften my jaw. Feel the inside of my mouth. Know that the center of my chest precedes all of that. Feel the chair. Trust the home.
Feel your breath. Don't change it. Thank your body. Think it again. Start to bring yourself back. Slightly deeper inhalation. Slightly longer exhalation. So that inward, when your eyes are closed, needs to eventually balance with the light when your eyes are open. That's why I often let you like reload. When I first do it, it's like kind of shocking, my eyes open. So you get to find it again. Close your eyes and then be ready for what's coming. So how you get to this place, in a way, all this practicing balance is a great way to practice one of the limbs, eight limbs of yoga, which is called pratyahara, because there's a withdraw from the senses that's required for effortless effort, right? And so... The goal isn't to always think you're balancing while you're lying in bed. The goal is to know that's a form of relief that actually could be at the core of every action if I learn how to simultaneously have those sensations and the practice of balance is how you learn how to, one of the really good ways to learn how to do it, right? And I would say, as what was in the newsletter, that the when you all are trying to practice being on balance without while feeling out of balance, or feeling balance when you don't have coordinated movement, you're actually being a pioneer in the sensation of balance. It's remarkable what we're asking you to do, right? And it's what every yoga practice, traditional or non-traditional does eventually, is put you in positions where there's no way you could feel balanced in the outer body. The poses get increasingly difficult to test your realization, not to reveal it. The realization of balance is incredibly simple. It just happens to be incredibly profound. And it's worth practicing. And if you, don't, you get frustrated with balancing poses, don't just do physically balancing poses then because that's only a rudimentary doorway to balance. And don't just do it in your head. It's not in your head. It's a connection that you're practicing. And it's not an idea. You don't have to create it. It's already here. It's, it's wild, right? All right, everybody. Good luck with all that crap. Hope it wasn't too taxing. People kept coming and going through the whole class. So it's like, I think I might've worn some people out or I made them all have to pee, which could have been it too. Namaste, spirit in me bows the spirit in you.